All right, we're going live, and I'm back. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I hope that you're doing well. That's uh, I was um, surprised that I was out for um, most of last week because I had this uh, man. I had to, some sort of illness the week before, got better, and then got something else. Pretty rough, and now my wife and daughter have it. Our daycares sick so it's it's been a tough uh been a tough time if you guys are there hopefully you're doing well and if you're in the chat please say hi let me know how things are sounding if you can hear me looks like it might be a little quiet maybe not but today we've got a ton of stuff to look at i i mean a lot of people are buying stuff over the weekend and there's i pulled all of it or most of it uh that we can look at and take uh a closer dive at some of the stuff that you picked up before you get it. And there's also some stuff that I have not appropriately promoted just yet, um, being the deer skin. So we're going to look at that too. What's up, Quan? I'm glad you can hear me. Uh, I think I had the norovirus. Yeah, I was like puking for a day. That lasted for a day. And then maybe like the next half a day, I wasn't feeling great. And then recovered over that weekend. And I don't know what happened the other... After that, a couple of days later, I had fevers and you might be able to hear some respiratory stuff here. All right. Dea's here. Thanks for picking up the uh, the music on uh, Bandcamp, Dea. If you haven't checked out the podcast episode today, the Full Grain podcast, uh, there's an interview with a uh, bass player for Monuments today, which uh, he's a very talented and a really good conversation. They're touring in, uh, I think they're in Eastern Europe by now. All right, who else is in the chat? Uh, Courtney's here. Thank you so much. Ryan, Ollie, Alex, Mark, Big Cheese. And it's Renners, Jaron, some really um, familiar faces here. I'm so glad to see you guys. What do you say we flip over the camera to uh, behind me here? And we got a bunch of stuff. I'll start looking at the, uh, the deer skin first, but give me a sec to flip it over and uh, walk over there. We're walking, we're walking, we're walking, we're being careful. Oh, not careful enough. Let's see if I can do this. We're still being careful to not knock over everything. I got a thumbs up. All right. Okay. <laughs> Big transition there. So smooth. All right, let's look at, uh, there's a ton of stuff on the table here and even some duplicates. Um, we're gonna have to skim through a lot of these, but I want to start off and look at the deer skin, which my, uh, these were ready when I was still in the shop a week ago. And this was our planned event for last week, but I was sick. So I couldn't uh, do some of the photos and make a nice video about it. So I took some photos yesterday and put them up on the site. And today I'm planning to make a little bit of a video that will describe this deer skin and what makes it special, what makes it different. And we're going to compare it. Um, here. Uh, we're going to compare it to some other stuff. So I just had to reach across the table. This is a piece of calf skin uh, that we can compare it to. I have some horse hide. There's, there's actually different segments of the horse hide that we can compare it to, including the shell cordovan. And then we're going to compare it to some bovine. But the first thing that you might notice about this specific piece of the deer skin, it's just how cool it looks. It's got a really cool, funky look that most people, when you tell them it's deer skin, they have a very specific image in mind, and it's very much the opposite of this. Most people think of deer skin as like very soft, um, very soft leather for gloves or something like that. And this is a tannage that has been applied to the deer skin that makes it very much different. So this tannage is actually the Derby. If you're familiar with Horwing Dublin leather, Halloween Derby is the Dublin leather that has been tumbled. So you get this really crazy sort of cracked up effect. And this is something we call the tumble pattern. Now the tumble pattern will vary a significant amount depending on where you are in the skin. And then also the thickness of the skin. We've also, we've noticed that uh, natural tumble patterns on thinner leather tend to be a finer uh, pebble pattern. Like you see here, a little bit of a finer texture especially right in this section. 
very, very fine pebble pattern. But as the skins get thicker in different animals, for example, like a belt weight, those pa pebble patterns tend to be more coarse because as it, this spins around and tumbles in the drum, excuse me for hitting the camera, as it spins around, the, it doesn't have as much room to flex back and forth on itself, sort of like this. Whereas if you have a thinner leather, like deer skin, you get a little bit of a finer pebble pattern. And on this derby deer skin, it's incredible. We're really, really happy with how these turned out. So we have, I don't know if the herb is available. I know the foxes are sold out. There's actually a couple of these left. We do have more of the leather. Um, we just haven't made any more. So if you want one, it's chances might be sold out, but uh, there are a few left up on the private stock page. But if you want something else, uh, we can probably have it made to order. And I do plan to run more of these because I just thought it was so special. The other notable thing about the deer skin is it is very thin when compared to steer hide. Excuse me, I'll rephrase that. The deer skin is very thin when compared to the bovine, the cow hides and the steer hides. And it tend, this one's like a little bit soft, but that might be just a result of the tumbling. So when you tumble the leather to get this sort of effect of the pebble pattern, not only do you get that pebble pattern, but it also tends to soften out the leather because you're loosening up all the bond, bonds of the fiber in the leather itself. So it tends to get like a little bit softer, but you also get that cool pebble pattern. So here's a vertical bugs in the Derby deerskin, and this is the color called brown. Now, one more story about the deerskin here is this was a sample like trial run that Horween was doing in this leather. They had somebody come to them and offer them deer skins and they decided to not proceed with it. Even though it is very cool, and very, very interesting. The thicknesses are very much inappropriate for Horween's mass um, customer base. So the thickness on these deer skins is around two to three ounces thick, which is roughly half the thickness that is required for most unlined boots and shoes and you know, sporting goods need to be thicker too. So they're not able to, or they're not going to produce this again. I guess they could, but right now this is the first and only maybe ever of the Derby deerskin. And uh, we picked up most of it from uh, Skip Horwing. It's a super special look, uh, very, very unique. Here's another one. This is the Bugs Moran with a traditional card slots. So you can see that crazy pebble pattern and color, the depth of color. That's the other thing that happens with the Derby leather as opposed to the Dublin, there is more depth in this because we're revealing those lighter undertones. But as you wear this, it will get a little bit darker, especially on the peaks of the pebble pattern where there's still wax. So if you burnish up the wax, those peaks of the texture will become darker and the valleys should stay a lighter color. So you get a really cool like color and texture contrast on the deer skin. Super cool. All right, uh, there's one other thing that we added and I think we made a few of these. Um, this is a re really good color combo. Very, very funky. And this is also a private stock. There's a couple of these. I, I think there might be a couple available still. So this is ultraviolet shell cordovan on the Johnny the Fox. And really, it's fun to see this leather uh, after being out for a few days, just to see how, how beautiful the leathers are still. Uh, good for me to step away and, and uh, be able to appreciate things a little bit more when I come back. So this is ultraviolet chill cordovan on the outside. And then we have a color combo on the inside. So this is the Royal blue Cypress for these top two cards or the top card slots and the centerpiece is that thinner Cypress leather. And then we have ultraviolet for the front two card slots. This one also, I, I was surprised about this because I didn't know what's happening. Uh, there's a couple of these available too on the private stock page, a little bit more funky, like, uh, aggressive um, styled. Not a lot of people are looking for like crazy color combos, but uh, some people really, really love a color combo. And so that's a good one. All right, let's keep it, let's just keep it rolling. <coughs> Excuse me. We got a bunch of belts going out. I actually did not pull all the belts, but here, this looks like a brown Chrome Excel belt. We're gonna cut this one to size 40. You can see we have not yet cut this to length on this end, but the brown chrome XL, very, very popular. Most, um, uh, uh, it used to be the case that brown chrome XL was the most popular chrome XL color. But I think these days it might even be black and natural 
might be more of it. There was a lot of boat shoes being made in the brown Chrome Excel. So here's a finished up one where you can see the holes have been cut and the tip has been cut on this belt and the holes are the, that cool teardrop shape. Brown Chrome Excel there. And I think there's black and navy on the table here too. Here's the black Chrome Excel. This is what people call uh, T-Core <laughs> because the undersides, that undyed natural color, and then they stain the black over the surface. This gets a cool two-tone effect, and as that's worn away, it gets a little bit more contrasty looking. Looks like we got another brown Chrome XL belt here. That's gonna be for size 38. And then the last Chrome XL belt, this one's also cut to size already. This is navy Chrome XL, which is a subtle blue. It's like a little bit darker. Um, so if you didn't have like a black next to it to compare to, you might confuse it as a black, but the undertones, especially on the navy Chrome XL, are really, really cool, like vibrant aqua blue shade that I love. And then here's a look at the uh, teardrop shaped holes on that one. Bunch of good belts going out. Keep with accessories quickly. Uh, a couple watch bands, Apple watch bands, natural shell cordovan here. Still need to pop the hardware on that guy. We have a reverse color eight shell cordovan Apple watch band. Also, you can see a couple of those ink stamps sort of peeking out there. And another watch strap that's very, very special. This is a private stock NATO strap. And this is, we call it all blacked out. This is a black shell cordovan with the black hardware, black stained edges, black stitching. It's a pretty sweet look. These are really long. Um, so let me, uh, let's, I'll save that story for later, but this is a really long pattern piece. So it's tough for us to get the appropriate thickness and length of shells to make the NATO straps, which is what makes them private stock. We're not able to do those all the time. Here's a fault key holder in my favorite shell color. This is the Amaretto shell cordovan. Still need to pop the hardware and oop, still need to pop the hardware in there. And I should mention that everything we're looking at still needs to get polished up. So we need to finish up the edges on most of these, polish up the grain, polish up the shells before we ship it out. That's our goal for the day. Here's a key buddy, a keychain belt clip in natural Chrome Excel. And we got a couple uh, Chicago combs. And these are carbon fiber combs. A couple of these are uh, sending out today in the English Hand Dublin comb sheaths. Speaking of English Hand Dublin, I also have a valet tray in the English Hand. Whoop. All right, tons of stuff. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Okay. I need to make more room. All right, here's a cool, this is a cool lighter sheath. Reverse black shell cordovan on this lighter sheath. Here is a color number eight shell cordovan Frank the Enforcer. That's the classic cordovan color. One shot card case. In our most popular leather, this is the English Hand Dublin. And also another Dublin piece. This is a black Dublin on the Capone Money Clip. I think this is for a special customer that when they order, they have us ship it in a specific way because they're a truck driver and uh, not available at home to pick it up very often. So it's uh, great to see this going out to a person that's going to really wear it hard. Really appreciate it. Here's another Capone Money Clip, this time in English Tan Dublin. Here's another one in the classic color HL Cordovan. Here's another Cordovan, uh, color eight Cordovan piece. You can see the edges have not been worked on for this guy yet, but this is our passport field notes holder in the color eight shell. It's huge pattern pieces. Here's a fat Herbie uh, designed for patina here. This is natural shell Cordovan. You could see uh, just another great piece for patina. As you wear these lighter colors of shell, they tend to develop a very beautiful and really dramatic patina. So it would become darker and a little bit more golden brown. And then it becomes uh, shinier even. And I find it develops in layers. The luster sort of develops from like inside. Okay. Uh, we had uh, another thing that happened, I guess, last week. Uh, if you guys are familiar with a YouTube channel, a fellow YouTube channel called Walletopia, um, he did a really nice review 
on this wallet here. This is the small zip wallet in English Chain Dublin. It seemed like he really liked it, uh, and especially the smell. He really enjoyed, he like did a whole segment of the video just smelling the le the leather, which is great. So I think a bunch of people picked up some small zips over the weekend here because of that video, and uh, I'm very thankful uh, for him uh, shouting us out. It was really nice, and I'm really excited for you guys to receive your brand new small zip. So we've got a couple in English Chan going out today. We'll just skim through those really, qu really quickly because each uh, piece of Dublin is unique and a little bit different. So some, they're all pretty similar, but you'll see that some have like a little bit more drama to them than others that are a little bit more flat. And speaking of drama, we also have a bunch of black small zips going out. These all have like really dramatic figuring in the grain. That's super beautiful. By the way, I can't see if you guys are chatting, but if you are chatting, I will read the chat as soon as we're done skimming these uh, wallets here. And if you have any questions, I'll stick around for a few minutes to answer those. I'm a little worried that I can't uh, catch my breath very well. <laughs> this uh, cold still got me here. <coughs> All right. Venetian shoe cream got a few of these going out today as well as some Tanner's Blend. So these are very different types of products. The Tanner's Blend is more of a conditioner that will nourish all the fibers in the leather and will not give you a bright, shiny luster as opposed to the Venetian and the Saphir Cordovan cream. These have more wax in the product, so they will give you a little bit of a brighter luster. So we like to use the Cordovan cream for all the shell Cordovan items that we do. I actually like all these for different reasons. Uh, the conditioner is obviously more of like just a conditioner function, so you're not gonna get a lot of luster there. But for the other two, you can kinda interchange them and get, get yourself a nice luster on any leather. Here's another one shot here in the new brown cypress, which is very nice. Here's a raw natural shell cordovan Capone money clip. Boop, almost dropped it there. This is speaking of patina. Maybe we compare that really quickly. The raw natural doesn't have that bright shiny luster to start where the normal natural shell does. You can see the, the difference in luster right there. But this is a great type of leather to make it your own patina. So you can develop that layer of luster yourself and then the color changes as dramatically as, as possible. So the raw natural is the best for that. Here's another Capone in English Tan Dublin. We have the brand new Royal Blue Cypress also on the Capone. These are very, very beautiful. I'm really happy with the blue Cypress. It seems like a lot of people love that one. Here's a piece of Western Whiskey Shell Cordovan on the Johnny the Fox with a natural Latigo interior couple of bugs morans here the brand new brown cypress for this guy and color eight shell cordovan you can see the hand stained edges on uh, our, all of our color eight shell cordovan items i really like how the hand stained edges really clean up the look of it it's a very beautiful look more brown cypress johnny the fox brown cypress pretty flat grains on the cypress leather and it's really really clean i use the word clean a lot but there's something like very refined looking about this leather but it also has that very natural characteristic which is what we love about all the aniline finished leathers it's a special piece it's, it's kind of like a tough way it's tough to make it look natural and clean <laughs> so that's that's why i'm really proud of those couple johnny the fox is in black dublin but you can see these have teal interiors so teal horsehide latigos for the inside of those foxes. And we have a couple other black options here. So this is black shell cordovan with a black horsehide on the inside. Here is black Dublin with the black horsehide on the inside. I think we have another one here. Another black Dublin here. It's a very big variance on the figuring and grain character in the Dublin. And we have an English tan Dublin Johnny the Fox, also pretty cool um, character on this Dublin here. Take a look at the inside. A couple more pieces to look at. One of my favorite. This is the wall that I'm wearing right now. Fat Herbie in the royal blue Cypress. Pretty sweet. Oh yeah, here's another one of the um, Tony the Ants here in the brown Derby deerskin. 
And Black Shell Cordovan, Capone Money Clip. You can see the character on the on the uh, Cordovan. It's very, very flat, very, very smooth, and really bright and shiny. We're looking at some of the Dublin earlier. It has a lot of character to that leather. And the last piece, here we go, Frank the Enforcer in Black Shell Cordovan. Lots of great stuff going out today. I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting us. Let me flip, flip it back to the desk here. Oh, we see a big chat. Shout yourself out in the chat if you're here. I want to say hi to you. And we have a lot of people to thank. Okay, man, lots of stuff to look at. Uh, I'm, it's it's uh, for me that was really fun because I love the leather so much. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fun to look at it with uh, semi fresh eyes, as uh, I haven't been around the shop for a bit. I see at the end of the chat here, I'll just pop ahead. Somebody asked how my royal blue is wearing in. It's beautiful. It's not changing color very quickly, which I think is a good thing. Um, but it is becoming brighter and shinier. So I haven't polished this up. I have noticed, though, when I brush my wallet here, it gets bright quickly. Uh, it's beautiful. Really love this new royal blue cypress. All right. Hopping back into the chat here. Let's see what you guys are talking about. Oh yeah, somebody last week said I look like a rapper with this microphone, and I am not. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Phone cases. My brother posted a, um, a reposted somebody's DS. Uh, did, did they see a phone case from us? And no, uh, but my brother reposted an Instagram post from somebody else that had a um, I think it was a Nomad phone case, and they conditioned it with the Tanner's blend, and they were showing that off. So I think that's why he shouted it out. All right. Uh, Manny says, good morning, Phil. Good morning, Manny. Alex, you guys ever consider making leather wristbands? Yeah, we have. Um, the closest thing we have right now is that NATO strap you looked at. We can do those in non-shell cordovan pretty easily so i know a lot of people just wear the nato straps as a uh like a cool wristband but nothing specific to uh, a wristband just yet gloves is exactly what you had in mind for the deer skin yeah so that's probably the first thing when i make this video I'm hopefully i don't know if my voice is ready to do that today my capacity to breathe is, is ready for that today so i might have to put this video off for tomorrow or something but um yeah, it's funny because people hear the word deerskin, I think their minds go to like, oh, soft for gloves. It's not necessarily the case. So there's a designation to make between the skins of the animal and the leather tannage. So you can kind of make any skin type uh, firm. You can make any skin type soft. Um, but there are some inherent characteristics to different animal types that I'd like to describe and use the ma macro uh, lens on the camera to get like really zoomed in on it. So you can really see the difference in the grain character. Um, Chase Smith says, good morning. Uh, yeah, was there norovirus in the news? Dang, I didn't know that. I had heard it was going around, but I didn't know. Uh, big deal. Uh, that it was like a big deal. Oh, Hedge Hendong. I almost heard your name is Hedgehog. Excuse me, Hendong. Glad you made a live stream, man. You're loving your natural Dublin Johnny the Fox. Man, uh, I don't remember doing natural Dublin. We might have done a couple. It's pretty close to the English tan, but less orange to it. But man, that's going to wear in great. I bet you it's looking really neat. Uh, Hendong says, thinking about a shell wallet for your birthday present to yourself, wanting uh, my opinion on first good shell color. Um, my, my thought would be, if you like patina and a leather that's going to change over time and you want to spend the money for cordovan i really like natural shell or raw natural there's something magical about how this stuff changes and it's very special you're never going to have in fact people come the, might be one of the reasons we're in business it's sad to say but it's when uh people lose their wallet they're so bummed out about it it's not because they lost like even the contents but they're really upset about losing the story that they've imprinted upon the leather 
on their wallets and they can't get it back so they buy another one and it's kind of a bummer but or like if their dog eats their wallets <laughs> a really pro big problem so i would say if you love patina and you want a transformation and you want to have a very unique piece that's special just to you i would say raw natural or, or natural and if you want something that is just a really cool color i really like the denim blue shells i love the amaretto i think the the amaretto sort of encroaches too far into the natural color so i would just choose the natural for that but you know raw denim is really neat uh, if you want a cool blue there's normal denim um that's where i would go we do some green also but really i think a lot of people come to us for patina so i'd probably push into the uh, raw natural realm um Oh, Dia says, really digging the raw natural today. Maybe looking for, looking at so many patina photos got you thinking. Yeah, raw natural is awesome, Dia. I recommend it. I also recommend just wearing what you already have. Because <laughs> uh, the stuff to, you can really, I do receive a lot of emails from people worried about the leather scratching and scuffing. And uh, I really wish I could... Um, impress upon them about my experience of wearing this leather for years this stuff is designed to be worn and to be beaten up not to be sitting on a shelf and the reason i say that is that as you wear it it actually gets better so those scuffs and scratches that appear do tend to blend in and fade away on just about every leather thinking about it i think on every leather that we do that is the case just wear it and love it if you think about it, if you want something that's not going to scuff, there, there's not many materials in the world that don't scratch. So unless you're making it out of diamonds or something. But even if I gave you a leather that was scratch resistant, you're probably not going to like it. You're probably not going to like the look of it and the feel of it because it's going to become more like silicone and plasticky. And those layers of finish applied to the grain will give you that scratch resistance because you, your fingernail or like something sharp can't easily grab onto it. So it just slides across the top instead of grabbing in and scratching. But it doesn't have the same character that you probably want, which is why I think people buy this stuff from us. It's very much a natural material. Um, I don't know how I got into that tangent. <laughs> uh, Alex says, loving the Royal Blue Johnny, trying to figure out what pocket to carry as the stitching on my new jean scratches it up oh that is maybe that's why um the royal blue if you're talking about the same royal blue that i'm wearing uh which is the only one <laughs> wow my my must be out of my mind right now need more coffee i'll tell you my anecdote about the royal blue um there's a backpack on the floor over here I went on vacation, threw my Fat Herbie into that backpack with keys and a bunch of other abrasive type items. And look at it now, it's fine. So it did scratch, but just the normal wearing of this thing, they tend to blend in. Pretty remarkable, especially on the Blue Cypress. So yeah, you, if there's like something sharp in your jeans, you might wanna just trim that thread out if there's some sort of crazy stitching. Um, a lot of people wear all our wallets in all pockets. So even the Fat Herbie, our largest wallet, my dad carries it in his front pocket as do many other people. So it's sort of up to your personal preference. But um, I've always done the back pocket. I think it actually polishes a little bit better too. But I just, that's where I'm comfortable wearing it. You should you should be able to fit the Johnny the Fox in the front pocket too. Can we have a patina update on the blue? Yep. Thanks for the question. Isaiah West F says, how long do you carry a wallet before you swap it out? I don't have a prescribed notion of how long I want to carry stuff for. Um, but it's sort of like if there is a wallet to be uh, wear tested or like the new development thing or something to that effect, whether it's new leather or new wallet, I want to wear it and have a good experience, uh, a good length of experience to be able to talk about it and see if I like it. So it's sort of like right now I've been wearing the blue for two months, um, but I don't have any other things I'm wearing right now. I am looking at a bin of stuff uh, that I've worn over the last 12 years we've been in business, which is crazy. Um, 
that they come and go it's kind of a bummer because like i said just wear the thing you already have uh because the more you wear it the better it gets and i i i tend to want to wear my stuff for a long time just because i love a dramatic transformation um so i don't i don't switch them out very frequently uh dia says still here thinking about a deer skin passport field notes holder we could do that dia um we could do that the leather is a little bit softer and doesn't have as much stand as i would prefer for the passport holder it will work but without the paper of your passport in there it might be like a little flimsy so that might be something to keep in mind but i think it would be nice um, but using it without a passport, I think it would be like a little too soft. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, Ben D I'm not a Cubs fan, but that blue leather screams Cubby blue. Oh, you should become a Cubs fan. Although we're terrible. Uh, D decibels. Glad you're feeling better and hopefully even better soon. Ordered a deer wallet last night. As soon as I saw them, they looked great. Oh man. Uh, I'm glad you did that. That's a really special leather that there's only a couple wallets left. So I think you, you got in, uh, early because nobody promoted it the french mc when we hear about patina we always hear about the leather darkening is there any cream or polish to darken excuse me is there any cream or polish or any way to lighten up the color i don't have a lot of experience with this but there's a product that saphir makes called a reno mat that tends to clean up a lot of stuff on the leather but it i have some of that product here and i've only experimented it with uh, only experimented with it a little bit that might be the product you're looking for i don't want to recommend it because i don't know so use at your own discretion but you might want to check out a product called reno mat it might work to lighten up um the other thing you can do with cordovan is leave it out in the sun and the sunlight tends to fade it you, you, a lot of the darkness that you see in there too might just be dirt so if you wash it with some soap it will lighten it up but you need to condition the leather afterwards with, with Tanner's blend or some other conditioner. Um, Manny, oh, uh, Manny just ordered a natural shell bugs with Bronze Cypress interior. Awesome. That's going to be really nice. That's a good combo. Isaiah, I hope you're doing well too. A lot of your gloves are lambskin. So is that more of a tannage or a natural softness? It's a tannage. <laughs> there you go. The tannage and not the animal are what create the temper of the leather. You can, you could pit tan that lambskin and make it a really dense, like outsole boot type of leather. And it looks like wood, that kind of stuff. But you don't see it because that leather is inherently thin and you want a thicker outsole. So it, what's happened is that there's products that have been created based on what the character of the leather already is. So lambskin is very thin. Um, it'd probably be best used to, on something that requires uh, something thin, like a glove. You don't want like a heavy like belt weight glove. You just couldn't move your hands. And actually, it wouldn't fit between your fingers. I think that's why we're seeing that in the way we're seeing that. A uh, couple more questions here. Tyler, Tyler uh, Phipps, good morning. I'm the truck driver. Yes. I just shouted you out. Can't wait to receive. Yeah. Your black Capone was the one on the table there. Uh, Tobias says, does zebra have uh, the shell membrane? Yes, they do. Zebras, donkeys, mules, and horses. Um, Bethan. Good morning. Will there be skip finish shell in the near future? Yeah. Uh, I don't know when skip did tell me he has something for me they're all very different it's hard for me to call it skip finish because each each trial he does is different look so we'd have to we're, i think we're gonna have to just make them take a photo put it up on the site and if you like the way it looks you buy it because these are not things that we can have be uh, made to order they're just different every time um good question and donk says it was the english chain dublin my mistake i have a pair of natural essex grant stones oh yeah yeah, there you go. I bet you those natural Essex grandstones are great. I'm wearing uh, right now my tan Essex grandstones. Love them. All right. Uh, Dia, I do wear my brown cypress Capone daily. Thought it, uh, though it's in a purse, carrying moleskin field notes. Book, I'd love to get it. Oh, so the, um, the passport holder, passport field notes holder is designed to fit field notes. So that might be really nice for you. 
I think do you, if you're throwing stuff in a if you're throwing stuff in a purse and and if you ever need an, another wallet, which it doesn't sound like you do, I think you might want to check out the small zip because I I really like the small zip for just throwing in a bag without having to worry about all my stuff falling all over the place. All right, I'm feeling a little bit better right now. Um, how does deer leather react to water? Considering depends on the tannage, my, my, uh, Mikhail. Um, considering a loafer with deer leather but can't afford to stain it. So the thing about water, it's going to affect every leather. And it really depends on the leather tannage. So if you think about how the leather was made, it was completely saturated with water during the tanning process. So it can take water, um, but it's more of like the the type of tannage and the type of finishing and if like how the water has affected your shoe. Basically, if you have like little spots of water, somebody like drip water on your shoes and you hit these little spots, just take a damp cloth and wipe the whole shoe down and uh, let it dry and, and then repolish it. Then it should even everything out. Um, I don't know, like, I don't know if I'd want a deer leather loafer because I think it's too thin. I'd be curious to see what you're trying to buy. Any plans for other Chicago Comb private sock options? Uh, we don't do a lot of those, Ben. I mean, they don't, we have the black metal combs and we have the carbon fiber combs and they're, those are fixed. So there's the same thing every time. So we just swap out the sheaths right now. Like we don't do a lot of them. Um, but right now I don't think we have anything planned. Um, but we can always like have any of that made to order. Like honestly, the deer, um, eh, might be a little too flimsy for the comb sheath. You could do like this deer skin for a comb sheath. It'd be cool and put like a green stitching on it or something. We could do a made to order if you're interested in a Chicago comb and comb sheath. Uh, ever do wrist straps? Uh, nope. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. Dia says, would uh, doing the inside of a password holder in any different leather? Yeah, it would actually, Dia. Um, I just don't know what would pair nicely. But yeah, you need, it needs, um, is this lateral stiffness? <laughs> it needs some like stiffness from both directions. But you know, if the outside of the wallet is that deer, it's going to be soft uh, closing up that way. So if you had like the Dublin or the Cypress on the inside card holders, that might be pretty sweet or even Cordovan might be, I don't know if I'd suggest the Cordovan because it'd be more expensive, but that does have more rigidity to it. But that's a good, that's a good idea. I think full, I think the full brown derby deer skin would be really neat too. Uh, all right. Jeff D's here. Just purchase your first two pair of grandsons. I love them. We actually owe them some belts. Uh, we got to ship grandson some belts this week. Uh, can we get an Ashland leather baseball cap? I've been thinking about that, Isaiah. I do have a machine we bought that can uh, and uh, stitch patches onto hats. That'd be amazing. I, I really wanted to do that, but I haven't really thought about what it would look like yet. How long to the Brown Cypress Capone? Tyler, that would have to be made to order. And I'm glad you asked. Uh, so best thing to do there, Tyler, just email my brother, Matt. And his email address is info at ashlandleather.com. Just say, put me on the list for the next Brown Cypress Capone. And we'll get you. We'll get you set up. Took your natural tan Dublin passport holder on its maiden trip not too long ago. Went to Faroe Islands uh, between Iceland and Scotland. Cool. I didn't know. That. I didn't know. I've never heard that name. That's so cool. Dude, you make me want to travel. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here today. Uh, it's been a good, good chat. Good to be back. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can be here tomorrow. My, like I said, my family's still sick, so it's a little selfish for me to come to work today and put all that uh, burden on my sick wife. But uh, gotta make some, gotta make some wallets. Appreciate you guys very much. Oh, I forgot to read off everybody's name. Uh, so if you hear your name here, you probably saw your wallet in the video. We got Ken, Jake, Matt, Robert, John, Andrew, Carl, Leonardo, Sebastian, Anthony, Tyler. Who is Tyler from the chat? Uh, Michael, Robert, Chan, Jason. Christopher T, Scott, Sean, George, Karen, Jalen, Jalen from the chat here, uh, Genghis, Stephanie, Paul, Derek, Charlie, Joel, Sherman, Sherman D, Fernando, Nikki, Gunner, Chris, Joseph, Neil, Chad, Daniel, Cameron, Andrew, Douglas, Kevin, Ntin, 
Noah, Michael, Michael R., Dwayne, Carolyn, Daniel, Scott, Alquan, Alex, Cheryl. A lot of great, got a lot of great familiar names here. Uh, Kyle, Sean, Jared, Richard, Perry, Demetrius, David, Ramiro, Dustin, David, and Jonathan. Those are orders from the weekend. I missed a bunch of people from last week because I wasn't here, but. Everybody, thank you guys so much um, for supporting us. It really, really means a lot. I say that every time, and um, I'm very sincere about it. We won't be able to do this stuff without you guys. Um, I just love making leather. <laughs> love making leather goods. All right, hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your day, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. All right, see ya.